If you like to save money, do not buy a house in one of these Detroit suburbs. In this video, I'm gonna tell you some of the cities and areas you should avoid if you don't wanna be stuck with a massive tax bill that never goes away and just keeps creeping up. Because you work hard for the money. So hard for it, honey. So you better buy the right house in Michigan. Is that bad poetry? Sound good? All right, let's go. If you're new here, my name is Paul and I make videos about all sorts of cities and areas all over Metro Detroit, Michigan. So if you like what you see, and I think you will, you should subscribe because there's a good chance I'm gonna cover some of the stuff that you're interested in or will be interested in if you're planning on making a move here or you know, you already live here and you wanna move somewhere else. Besides, there's more where that came from or you know, there's more where this is coming from right now because it's coming from me. That doesn't make sense. So subscribe. And if you want to make a move to any of these cities or any other cities, reach out because I'm also a full-time real estate agent and I've helped hundreds of people buy and sell homes all over Metro Detroit, Michigan. So there's a good chance I can help you too. You can just look me up on the internet or you can email me, you can text me, you can call me. I mean, I'm pretty much everywhere. It's all over social media. Instagram, that works too. Facebook, I'm there. All right, so the cities you should not buy a house in or the areas that you should not buy a house in in Michigan. Now, if you're thinking, Paul, can you tell me that I shouldn't buy a house in a certain area? Well, uh, yes and no. I can tell you that some areas have super high taxes. And so if you're planning on staying there for the long term, or if you want to eventually rent these places out, you are going to have a crazy high tax bill that never goes away and just keeps creeping up. What? I'm not paying more in taxes. You have to look at buying a house like a long-term investment. You just have to. Even if you're not planning on being an investor, you should just look at it that way. Because even after you pay your house off, you still have the taxes. Those are not going anywhere. So you're still gonna have the taxes. And if you buy in like a fancy sub, you still have the HOA fee. So you're gonna have taxes, HOA fee, not going anywhere. Some of my clients buy and they plan on moving in five years. That's the five year plan. And some people buy and they plan on holding the property and then renting it out. And then some of my other clients, they wanna buy and they just wanna rent it out. So if you're in any one of those boats, let me know. I'll come in the boat with you. We'll go and take a trip in a boat. An important part of this is that rental rates, if you're going to own a home as a secondary property and you're going to own it as an investment, you are going to pay more for your taxes. It's higher, like 40% higher than if you live there as, a, as your homesteaded property. For these different areas, we're gonna be looking at millage rates, which are basically your tax rates for the property. The way that millage rates work, I don't wanna to get too crazy technical on you. Basically, if a millage rate is 10, you're going to pay $10 for every $1,000 in assessed value for your property. And your assessed value is typically about half of your purchase price value. So if your house is $500,000, you're gonna pay taxes on about 250 of that. And stick around to the end of this video because there's one city that has six different tax rates depending on where you live in the city. And some of them are like crazy, crazy high and some of them are pretty low. And it's weird because you would expect the lower one to be higher. It's are. You have to check it out. Like that one has like the best houses in it. All right, so the first one on our list is Royal Oak Township. Now, if you watch my video on the best places to live in Oakland County, Michigan, Royal Oak is on that list. So it's kind of weird that it's on this list too. But this isn't regular Royal Oak we're talking about. This is Royal Oak Township, not the city of Royal Oak. The taxes in Royal Oak Township are bananas. They're straight up crazy. The tax rate here is 74. Remember we talked about that, the little math a little bit ago. It's 74 if you live there and 92 if you rent it. So if you have a $200,000 house in Royal Oak Township with Ferndale Schools, you'll be paying over $7,000 a year in taxes if you live there and over $9,000 if you rent it out. That means if you own a home here and you rent it out for about a thousand bucks a month, about or a little over $700 of that will go to taxes. That's ridiculous. And it's just about the same with Royal Oak Township with Oak Park School. So there are two different districts in this area. Now, if you bought the same house in Royal Oak City, the city of Royal Oak, you would be paying about $4,000 if you live there and about 5,700 bucks 
if you rented it out. So if you're gonna rent it, the city of Royal Oak, that's where you wanna be. Next one on our list is Detroit. Now if you watch my video about do not move to Detroit, Michigan, you can watch it here. When you're done with this one, you know exactly how I feel about the city. And it's not all bad. There's a ton going on, there's a ton to do, city on move, shaking things around, and there's a bunch of old houses and prices are on the rise. The tax rate here is 70.32 if you live there and 88.5 if you rent it. It's crazy. It's almost as crazy as the last one. Luckily, the city's average home price is about $45,000, but that just keeps going up as more and more people decide that they want to move to the city of Detroit. So you're going to have higher home prices there and the taxes are still super crazy high. If you buy a $200,000 house in the city of Detroit, your taxes will be a little over $7,000 a year if you live there and about 8,800 bucks a year if you rent it out. So if you're buying a home and you wanna have it as a rental, you're gonna be paying a lot of money in the city of Detroit. Next up on our list is Ferndale, Michigan. Now this is another one that makes my my top places to live in Oakland County. But again, if you're going to hold on to a house as an investment property for the long term, you're gonna be paying a lot of money in taxes. Tax rate is 54 if you live there and 72 if you rent it out. That's a pretty steep jump. Now the city's average price is about $148,000 right now, but that continues to go up, especially in this market right now. People like living in Ferndale. They've got a cool downtown. They've got a lot of stuff to do. Again, I think that Ferndale is one of the best places to live in Michigan, but maybe not one of the best ones to own a rental in. And that sucks because it would be a great place to rent in. So if you're in Ferndale, I suggest you check out the Fly Trap Diner and one Eye Betty's. Those are both restaurants. They're amazing. You should check them out. I know that's a little off what we're talking about right now, but hey, you know, I could throw out some recommendations for you. It's so good there. Oh, it's just delicious. Every time I'm going by, I'm like, man, I need to stop. But a lot of times, I don't have time to stop. I'm selling houses. Next one on our list is Southfield, Michigan. I think everyone who talks to me about taxes talks about Southfield and how high the taxes are. And they're right, and they're also kind of wrong because there's a bunch of different tax areas here too. Now, if you live in Southfield with Southfield schools, you're gonna pay about 63 if you live there and 65 if you rent it out. Now, that's not a huge difference. That's between you know, 6,300 and 6,500 on a $200,000 house. Not quite like the other ones we were talking about. It goes down a little bit if you live there, if you're in the Birmingham School District, which is a super desirable area, but it goes up crazy high if you rent it out. So if you own a home in Southfield with the Birmingham School District, it's great to live there, but again, your taxes are gonna be bananas if you rent that place out. And that sucks because that's one of the hottest real estate markets around. Everybody wants to be in Southfield with Birmingham schools if they live in Southfield. Now, if you want to live in Southfield and you want to save a ton of money, you're going to want to live in Southfield Township. They are way, way, way lower, lower in Southfield Township. Next one on our list is Westland, Michigan. Now this one is tricky. You have six different zones in Westland, which is crazy, right? Six in one city. You've got an area with Westland schools, another one with Garden City schools, you've got Inkster schools, you've got Romula schools, and then you have Livonia schools. That's six areas, one city. The most expensive of these areas in Westland is actually the zone with Inkster schools. You'll pay 56 mils to live there and 74 if you rent it out. That's like 7,400 bucks on a $200,000 house. Oddly, Livonia, the Livonia School District area of Westland is the cheapest. That same house will cost a thousand dollars less. A thousand in Texas. Now the flip side of that is that is the most expensive part of Westland to buy in. So if you're going to buy a house in Westland, the Livonia School District area, you will pay more upfront for that house, but in the long run, you're going to pay less because again, the taxes never, ever, ever go away. It's one thing that you will always have to pay. So if you're gonna buy in Westland and you wanna save money on taxes, buy in the Livonia School District. 